Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome again everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about string manipulation, specifically how to manipulate strings and do things with strings when they're inside of variables. There, there is string manipulation that you can do with a function called expr. I believe it's a bash built in. Um, it, it might even be more portable than what we're going to talk about today, but uh, that needs to be a separate video. The expr command can do other things, including, I, I believe, some test comparison and arithmetic that we're just not covering in this video. So uh, before we get started, be aware this is going to be a whirlwind video. It's going to go very quickly because there's a, there are a lot of things you can do, at least in Bash anyway, to do substrings and find different indexes and whatnot. So don't expect me to spend forever talking about them. I will fly through them but I will include a link where you can download this shell script. I'll put it in the description part of the video and uh, that link will be good forever. So you can download it and read them yourself. Um, let's cut over to the training VM and I'll show you really fast this file. It has uh, a, a bunch of printf lines that we're gonna you know, see the output of later, but it shows you exactly what it is we're going to do and prints out the value, but it also includes a comment that will tell you what's happening. And of course, if you ever have questions with this, leave a comment. I can put annotations in the video later or just email you back or comment back and we'll get it figured out, okay? So with that, let me find my uh, timer. Do, do, do. There we go. And let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually run this command and then scroll back up to the top. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to get string length. Um, so var is set to some text, it will be forever from here on out. Uh, if you put the hash symbol in front of it or the pound symbol, it tells you how many characters are in it. Remember spaces count as characters, so that's nine, okay? Uh, empty is another variable we create that's never going to change and it has quote quote in it, which means it's an empty string, all right? So the length of an empty string is of course zero. The next section we can talk about is case conversion. Uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, variables still set the same. If you see a tilde here, what that means is transpose the case of the first character. So if it's lower, make it upper. If it's upper, make it lower. If you use two of them, it applies it to the whole string, okay? A comma means make the first one lower. Two comma means makes the whole string lower. So obviously this one didn't change, it was already lower this whole string became lower. This means uh, the caret symbol means make it uppercase. Two carats means makes the whole string uppercase. So our lowercase became an uppercase and then these didn't, but this one, the whole thing became uppercase. You can also apply regex patterns here. It varies from shell to shell. You should probably be safe relying on POSIX or regex rules, but don't quote me on that. So AEIOU, you know, those got changed, the others didn't. You kind of see where that's going. Another section that's very popular is applying default values. So var has something in it. Empty has had something set to it. It's quote, quote, so it is set, but it's empty. Fake, on the other hand, has never had anything assigned to it. It's not a real variable. I never even assigned an empty string to it. And bash can distinguish between those two. So if you use a colon and then a dash, what it says is if there is nothing in this, okay, if it's empty, go ahead and print the message you put afterward. Otherwise, print whatever's in the variable. Well, var has something in it, empty and fake do not, so empty and fake get that default. If you use just a dash without the colon in front of it, it says show whatever's over here if the variable is not set. Well, this is different because empty is set, but it's just empty. So this one and this one show their values. Fake has never been set, so it shows the message we applied, which was not set. Uh, using a plus here instead of a minus like we did up here is just the opposite. If it is set, show this message, otherwise show this, which frankly is kind of dumb because if it's not set, all it'll ever display is nothing, but whatever. The equal sign and the colon equal sign are similar. It means if var has nothing is unset, go ahead and set this value to it. So put hello into it if it's unset and then print it out. So fake is the only one that that happened to. 
and then of course I unset it again for our next set of tests here. And colon equals means if it's unset or if it's blank, go ahead and put hello in it. So since empty was blank, it went ahead and put hello into it. All right. So let's go ahead and scroll down the last few sections. Um, substrings, if you want to get positional based substrings, all you need to know is first of all, use a space after every colon because if you don't, you risk having this negative sign, this dash, run into your colon. And as we just learned, colon dash means default. It doesn't mean index. So first thing to know is the first number is always an index and it starts at zero. You can use negative indexes like we show here and it will start counting back from the back side of the string. If you use a positive number as the second number, it's the length that you want to go over. If you use a negative number, it means how many, uh, what position from the back of the string, what negative index do you want to go to? Okay, you can see these examples for yourself later. One very cool thing is that you can use variables inside your braces. So you can set a variable like start and then stop, I used X and Y, and then it will give you what you expect. Be aware that using variables with, if I were to put braces around X here and braces around Y, some shells are okay with that. I'm on bash 4.3 and it works. Other shells are not okay with having braces inside of braces. All right, the last ones are pattern replacement. It, we have a variable here called mirror. It just has ABCs on the outside, capital ABCs toward the middle, and one, two, three smack dab in the middle. If you put a slash something slash something else, it means find all instances of this, replace it, or sorry, find the first instance of this and replace it with this. So find the first ABC, replace it with XYZ, which is what it did. It didn't get the next one though. We're just about out of time. This one means apply it globally, two slashes. Forward slash hash is actually the same thing as this. It just means from the start of the string do it. Uh, forward slash percent means find the first ABC replaced with XYZ, but go from the back of the string toward the front, okay? All right, we are out of time. The last ones you can look at, they're pretty cool. They have to do with pattern deletion. Um, you know, using either one or two percent signs or, or hash symbols and then a globbing pattern here. Um, they're, they're very popular. You'll see them used when people are trying to do you know, get rid of file name extensions or something, something to that effect. They're very straightforward. I don't think you're going to need me to sit here and talk through them. So since we're out of time, let me go ahead and I've got one last note I wanted to remember to tell you guys. Oh, yes, the variables themselves are never actually changed. So when we echo these things out or when we run these, it, it doesn't actually change the value of our variable. It's not an in-place replacement. Okay, so with that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you thought this was helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, you want to know about other things, feel free to just spam the comment section and we'll try to get things answered. Uh, again, I can add annotations to help uh, improve this or just redo the whole thing. Maybe even break it into two parts if it's too big. Uh, other than that, please subscribe and uh, you know that, that lets me get these videos out to you guys. Thanks a lot and have a great day.